This episode is brought to you by Cox Home Life. Cox helps make your home smarter. And now you can pull up your home life cameras on your TV with your contour voice remote and some simple voice commands. To learn more, visit cox.com slash this is home. This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. We talked last time about the influencer pay gap and new data from Isaiah that gives us a look at progress made or not in the breakdown of how women are paid compared to men and how various races and groups are paid when compared to white counterparts. One of the surprising pieces of data there for me was the vast gap in the number of influencers by gender. Isaiah's numbers showed that 83% of the content creators it analyzed were women. Whether or not that gives us some level of explanation or context around the gender pay gap, that's a huge difference in sheer numbers. Collabster also recently released some interesting influencer industry data. Collabster is also a software company that helps brands source influencers and content creators on various social networks. Its 2022 State of Influencer Marketing report has another treasure trove of data analyzing the 5,000 brands and 27,000 influencers in Collabster's data set. It goes deeper in the gender and age breakdowns of influencers by platform. Did you know that over 80% of TikTok creators from 50,000 followers and down are women? 75% of TikTokers making money with Collabster are females overall. The number on Instagram, 78%. YouTube is even woman-heavy, with 69% of creators from the female side of the gender aisle. Kyle DeLay is a co-founder at Collapster. He joined me recently to talk through his company's report, its implications for brands, and of course, we spent a little time talking about Collapster's platform and what makes it stand out. It's actually pretty handy. There are some interesting insights here, folks, so get out your notepads. While you're readying to take those notes, let's take a moment, though, to learn something from a customer of our presenting sponsor, Tagger. It is a complete influencer marketing software suite that allows you to find, connect, and collaborate with influencers, execute campaigns, and measure success. But as you know, I like to chat with Tagger customers rather than just drop an ad here. I think it's far more useful for you to hear what they've learned and what they're using the platform for. TJ Ferreira is one of those customers. He's the co-founder of Bubs Naturals, a health and wellness family of products. I spoke to him recently about how he uses Tagger. Think back to life before you were using Tagger. What, what's the biggest pain point that it solved for you? Uh, a litany of Excel sheets and explaining. Um, for us, there's a lot of uh, analysis paralysis in the company. Um, a lot of justification and second guessing and kind of direction that we want to go. Is this the right area? Is it going to be good ROAS? Is it going to be a good look for the brand? Is it going to be good engagement? What are the end of goals? And sometimes, you know, that decision, which could be a snapshot takes three, four, five days. Plus you're looking at data from multiple sources and you have humans entering that data, which regardless of how good they are, it's prone to error. Somebody can fat finger, forget a zero, forget a comma, a decimal point, what have you. Um, this takes that humanness out of the, the data collections process and it really just streamlines that that back end decision making that could have been analysis paralysis and just stamps it and says, hey, OK, make the decision now. Is this good? You have as much data as you're going to get. So keep it moving. Thanks to TJ and Bubs Naturals for sharing their use of Tagger to learn more and get a demo to see if Tagger is right for you. Just visit jason.online slash Tagger today. That's jason.online slash tagger. New data on influencers from Collabster. Co-founder Kyle DeLay is next on Winfluence. You're listening to this podcast advertisement, so you know they're effective. But knowing which podcasts align with your target audience is impossible, right? Not anymore. 
Pod Chaser Pro is the one-stop shop for all podcast data, like listener counts, demographic and geographic information, and contacts for thousands of the top podcasts across any topic or industry. Learn more at podchaserpro.com slash MPN today. That's podchaserpro.com slash MPN. Kyle, you know, before we get into this conversation uh, about some of the data that you guys have published recently, that's really interesting. Um, I think uh, it's probably fair to let everybody know what perspective you're coming from. Tell us about Collabster. Yeah, for sure. So Collabster is an open marketplace where brands can come and find and hire content creators. And so a lot of brands will use Collabster to purchase high quality user generated content. And what that looks like is um, a lot of brands use Collabster for sponsored posts on social media. So places like TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. But a lot of brands also come to Collabster because they need some sort of creator generated content. And that looks like testimonials, unboxing videos, tutorials, things that they can share on their website or their own social media channels. And so a lot of the data you see in this report is, or all of the data you see in this report is pulled from the marketplace based on the behavior that we see uh, between the interactions with these brands and these content creators. So to give everybody a little bit of context around the report, it's the 2022 Influencer Marketing Report, everything you need to know about influencer marketing, which is published by your company, Collabster. 5,000 advertisers and 27,000 content creators uh, involved in this. So it's not just a random sampling. This is a good pool of data, right? Exactly. It's all users that we have insight into. And so... For example, the brands, we can understand what industry they're from or um, exactly how many creators they worked with and uh, what kind of budgets they're paying. Um, these are all things that we have insight into because we control the platform. And so uh, obviously the data is anonymous, but uh, we're able to consolidate it through the platform itself in like real world use cases. So this is a, a really good sample size. I mean, if you're thinking about, you know, there's literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of influencers out there and, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of advertisers or brands using them. But, you know, there are research companies that, you know, formulate research based on a sample size of 200 and extrapolate it out. So when you've got 27,000 content creators and 5,000 advertisers, it's a good bit of data. So the the striking uh, thing that I think popped off, and I, it's it does strike me as odd, but at the same time, it doesn't. I was still, though, surprised that 77% of influencers that are monetizing their content are female. Now, I would have said it's probably leaning toward the majority of them being female, but I wouldn't have thought 77%. Did that number surprise you? Yeah, it's surprise. It's it's very surprising when you look at it as an overall um, as an overall. Um, but when you dig deeper into it, you see that platforms like Instagram and TikTok significantly make that gap much wider. And so when you look into, we have a breakdown in the report where it goes deeper and it looks at okay, what's the breakdown, uh, the gender breakdown of content creators that are making money on TikTok and Instagram, and you can see the gap is is huge there when it comes to females versus males, and that's where they really dominate. Um, and then when you look over to YouTube, you see that that gap actually closes, and as you climb up the follower range as well, and you go into the, the, the bigger content creators on YouTube, you realize that that gap almost closes entirely and it almost becomes equal between males and females and how much they're actually making on the platform. And so I think it was interesting to see that. But I think when you look at Instagram and TikTok, it's also not a surprise to understand that females are kind of dominating the space there. Just by being a consumer on the platform, you can almost see that. I'm looking at the gender breakdown of just of TikTok influencers anecdotally here so people can get a little bit better understanding of what we're talking about. When you're looking at the smaller number of followers, 1,000 to 10,000, you've got 89% of those are female. Mm -hmm. then, you, then you go up to the next level, 10,000 to 50,000 followers, 80%. So it's getting a little closer, but it's still a huge you know, gap, four to one. Um, and then 50 to 100,000 followers, 74%. Now you're, you're still, you know, 
uh, three to one, but that's, you know, that's still a lot, uh, you know, a big gap. And then to your point, when you get up to the hundred thousand to 50,000 or 500,000 followers, 60% female, 40% male. I wonder if this is indicative or can we tell if this is indicative that uh, maybe uh, the men who have uh, a large number of followers, do they charge more? Uh, or it, it's not a measurement of, of how much they make, though. It's just a measurement of of what they're that they are monetizing and what their gender is, right? Yeah, for sure. So it's this is a measure of people that are actively making money, um, being content creators, and what their gender is, right? And so there is a there there are a select um, group of men that do really well as well. And what we notice with those men is that they really dominate a small niche. And they're really big in that niche. And that's kind of what makes them attractive as a male. Um, when you put a male versus a female toe-to-toe in the same niche, let's say beauty, for example, it's almost like nine times out of 10, the, the, the female is the one that's going to be getting those brand deals over the male. And that's just kind of how it works. And so it seems like the demand is higher for females. There's definitely also a much larger supply of female content creators, especially in the micro-influencer range when you compare it to males. And so I think um, the reason we see this gap kind of close as we climb higher and higher is because once you have content creators that have followings in the hundreds of thousands or the millions, um, they've established themselves as experts in those niches. And so there's always going to be someone that wants to work with them. And so I think it becomes less of a saturation thing when, when you move up the scale like that. Yeah, that's a really good point because uh, obviously the the higher the number of followers, I, you can almost say the more mainstream they are and the more mainstream they are, the more balanced that gender makeup is going to be. Uh, I would be interested also, though, to look at, and I know this is not in your report, but I would love to see the gender breakdown of their audiences, too. I think that would be really cool. So maybe next year you guys can throw that in there. But um, Yeah, for sure. So another thing that uh, didn't surprise me about the report, but I thought it was worth talking about was the average price for content on each platform. So per post or per video or per engagement, according to your data, Instagram and TikTok, you know, look pretty, you know, parallel, pretty, uh, you know, uh, even there, $410 for an average Instagram post, $530 for the average TikTok post. YouTube is almost double that doesn't surprise me really at all because you're talking about video production, but you're also doing video production with Instagram reels and TikTok. So I wonder why there's such a drop off there. So with Instagram and TikTok and the Instagram numbers also include um, smaller forms of content creation, like stories, for example. Right. And so that's, that might be one thing that's kind of making it uh, more on par with TikTok. But I think the big thing is that, um, TikTok and Instagram are specifically short video, right? And so most of the the video content that is sold on Collabster is 60 seconds or less. And um, this is because uh, it, it short video is kind of a phenomenon right now. And like it's 60 seconds or less is what's performing right now. And so uh, I think the effort that goes into a 60 second short video, and especially with TikTok kind of standardizing the whole idea of like not having to have polished up content, something that you just film on your phone and put out there. I think it's much easier than, than a YouTube video where you actually have to edit it in post-production. Um, and so that's kind of why that, that gap exists between Instagram and TikTok versus YouTube. So looking at your, your platform, it, it is a marketplace. I'm, I'm just curious. I want to ask you a little bit more just about Collabster uh, outside of the, the data here. Um, I like the fact that I can go there and just, you know, browse influencers and you've got, you know, a price, an average price or a starting price is, is, is relevant for me. So if I'm a brand person, I can go here and I can get a pretty good idea for what money I might need to spend or budget to be able to engage some of these folks. Tell me a little bit about how Collapster got started and, and is this what you intended it to be or did you pivot somewhere along the way? So Collapster started, um, We've pretty much always been along the lines of connecting uh, content creators with businesses that were, you know, relevant to their interests. And so um, 
We initially started with local restaurants in Vancouver. That's where our company is founded. And we expanded to, you know, being Canada wide. And now we're operating in 35 different countries. And we have content creators in a lot of these countries. Our biggest uh, markets when it comes to content creators and brands are UK, Australia, United States and Canada. Um, And so we put a lot of focus there. But the idea has always been connecting content creators with brands, right? Uh, The one thing that we really see is like, brands are gonna be increasingly dependent on creator generated content moving forward. And so we want to be that place where brands can come and purchase high quality content at scale. And uh, that's the whole reason for having an open platform, right? And that's what allows us to make reports that have such large data sets. It's because we, we have so many brands and content creators that are, are able to use our platform. Well, and, and for those that are uh, out there in the time that he answered that question, uh, as Kyle was talking there, I jumped over, I typed in a category of uh, influencer technology, YouTube influencers with a certain number of followers. And on this page, I see several different options from actually several different countries. Even there's someone from France there, someone from looks like Latin America. But I'm, I, I see two people that I'm looking at right now that I'm going to be like, oh, OK, I could use these two in a campaign uh, for a client right now. So very quick and easy to use, which is something you don't always find uh, in the tools now. And Collapster is is uh, it's free to use and go browse too, which some some influencer marketing tools you have to pay just to be able to look. But you can browse here, but your your tool is set up so that I can click through uh, and basically engage this influencer right on the platform, correct? Yeah, exactly. That's great. Excellent. So, Kyle, uh, tell uh, people where they can find more about the report and where they can uh, find Collapster online. Yeah, for sure. So our website's definitely the best place, uh, Collapster.com. And you can find the influencer marketing report on there as well. Uh, we're also on Twitter. Um, at use collabster and on LinkedIn as collabster. And those are kind of, we're also on TikTok actually. That's probably our most active platform right now. We're posting a lot of content on TikTok right now. And so you can find us at collabster.com on TikTok as well. Uh, if you want to, if you want some content on digital marketing tricks and tips and tricks, uh, we got you there. Walk in the walk. I like it. It's yeah. uh it's good to see an influencer company like yours actually uh, putting up some TikTok content since that's the the hot new thing. Well, Kyle, man, thanks for uh, the, the data and the insights from your report. Thanks for uh, having such a great platform. Uh, and thanks for sharing some wisdom with us today. Yeah, thank you so much. And thanks for having me. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast is presented by my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K Club and Grammy Award winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening. And remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. Hey, it's Seth from Entrepreneurs Enigma here on the Marketing Podcast Network. I know you're enjoying your current show, so I won't keep you too long. I just wanted to tell you about my show. Every week, I interview entrepreneurs from all types of industries about their entrepreneurial journey. No two journeys are the same, and my goal is to highlight the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur from a wide variety of perspectives. Learn more and subscribe at entrepreneursenigma.com. See you there. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.